I don't have any any issues, no phone calls, no, you know, Jason, uh, you know, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. It's like you go in there and they get it done. I don't know how you're doing it, to be honest with you, right? I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs>
And then I was fortunate to land a job back in Western Kentucky where I've been at this whole time. And so I had bought this foreclosure in that, or uh, it was actually Smyrna, Tennessee, and it didn't need a whole lot of work. I, I really felt fortunate to get it at the time. And rents, of course, in that area are really high and, and property values are really high. So for me to get that house as cheap as I did, I was pretty excited about it. And we fixed it up while we lived there. We lived there for probably a year and a half and sold it and made, I don't know, fifteen or $20,000 on that property. And I was really excited about that. Uh, keep going. I've moved a lot. <laughs> so then we, uh, we moved, we moved back to Western Kentucky and my grandpa was looking to downsize his, his home and he was trying to sell his home. And I'm like, I'll buy your home. <laughs> so he sold me his property at a good deal. Bought that property, lived there about a year and a half, two years. And then I started thinking about, I'd like to try to build a house. Like, I want to see if I can build a house. I started reading books, not knowing anything about anything. Here I am being my own general contractor and built my first house, sold my grandpa's house, made some money on that one and, and just kept kind of snowballing it a little bit. And I lived in that house that we built for probably about four or five years and uh, decided I wanted to try to build another one because <laughs> I liked it and uh, sold that property, made some money and then built the house I'm living in now. Uh, and Rhett, to be honest with you, I like building houses and I'm sure you can to attest this, but sometimes dealing with contractors can be tough That's and it's a little bit stressful. And, uh, you know, just like with first house we built, I don't know that I would have used any of the contractors I used ever again. So then I built this house and, you know, there's several, I had some good contractors, but again, a lot of them, you know, you're constantly calling them and, and getting them to show up and, in fact, my wife was, she didn't like the flooring guy. She said he was lazy, uh, constantly playing on his phone, was eating pizza. And I was a little hurt because I was a flooring guy. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> building houses, it's, it's, I like it because you build equity and you can make some money at it and everything. But uh, I, I, I've been very successful at it. And during that time, in, when after I built my first house, uh, me and a guy at work, uh, bought an apartment building and 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 uh, it was like a five unit building or whatever. And this will lead into why I decided I wanted to join up with you and and start my my investing career in Birmingham. But we bought an apartment building. It was a little rough, needed work, and we got kind of surprised when we bought it that it had a lot of uh, violations of the in the like city violations, yeah. not disclosed to us, and there really wasn't any recourse. We were just like told by the city either fix these problems or they're going to tear it down. And we were young men at the time. So it was pretty scary. And we got, we got through that, but uh, again, showing my age, Facebook wasn't super big at the time. Social media wasn't super big at the time. And so, and we, of course, we didn't know anything about anything. We would, we inherited a couple tenants in the place and they were section eight tenants. Didn't really know anything other than the government pretty much gave us a check every, every month. And, uh, and uh, the other I think there might have been one other tenant, maybe two other tenants living in there, and they were cash tenants, uh, high turnover with them. And we struggled a little bit trying to find tenants because, you know, putting a sign in the yard or maybe putting an ad in the newspaper about the only ways we really even knew. Uh, knowing what I know now about Section 8, I would have, you know, talked to the housing authority and advertised that way. But again, not knowing anything about anything. But our Section 8 tenants were the best tenants we had. They kept the places clean. One had to pay a little bit on top of what Section 8 covered, and they would run out to you with the rent money, like excited to pay you or whatever. And I'm like, this is nice. And uh, we ended up selling that to, uh, I think, an investment firm out of California, made some money on it just because we were kind of burnt out with all, having to do all the repairs ourselves all that time. And uh, we just decided, hey, you know, let's let's cash out and, and, and maybe look at something else down the road. And then I just kind of stayed out of real estate investing for a while. And uh, then I started getting the bug again and looking for uh, for some properties and trying to figure out a way to make some money at it. And then I started seeing your videos on YouTube about Section 8 and it, it sparked my memory. I'm like, those were the best tenants I had. And, uh, and Section 8, you know, worked out good then, you know, and this guy seems pretty successful at it. I'd like to talk with him and see what he can, uh, what direction he can point me in and everything. And, and it's been going really good so far. Yeah. And, and Jason, 
first of all, thank you for that background. Okay. So many people are going to be interested in, and people ask me all the time, what kind of, of prerequisite do I need to have to get into Section 8? And you are a, a, a rarity amongst a lot of people I work with because you've had a, a pretty deep, extensive background in real estate before we started working with each other. I mean, you just rattled off like five different acquisitions between foreclosure purchases, uh, ground up constructions, dealing with tenants, multifamily. That's a pretty broad spectrum. So for you to have been involved in all of those different kinds of real estate transactions and then come back to Section 8, that says something. To me. Yep. And you said it right there. You've had a, a multifamily building with cash tenants and Section 8, and your experience was much better with the Section 8 tenants. Now, in the last, so May, we've been working together for about 18 months You've onboarded three properties, great properties. And the first unit we did, you purchased for 66000 After it was all said and done, we put a little bit, somewhere between ten and 12000 total in there, correct? Somewhere around that. And we had a cash tenant approach us for it who wanted to pay more than we could get for Section 8. Explain how that process went going against what our original thoughts were with Section 8 and going with a cash tenant. How did that turn out? Well, one of the reasons I, I was excited about the cash tenant was because they were uh, they, they were so, they were on Social Security. So I thought, well, they got guaranteed income coming in every month. And I think they had moved from like Indiana or something like that. And I figured, you know, they're used to paying these high, high rental properties. And if they and uh, we actually had I uh, had our uh, property manager reached out to her previous landlord and they said that they were good paying tenants. So one, I was like, well, they're older. They're probably not going to tear up my property Two, They, they're getting social security. So they got guaranteed money coming in and, and three, you know, that they're being from Indiana. I assume they were used to paying the higher, higher uh, rental prices or whatever. And so onboarded them and things went great. I don't know, eight, nine months of it. And then they got to where, they couldn't make one of the rental or they were short one month and promised to catch up. And then the next month they didn't catch up. And then we finally had to, uh, to uh, evict them, unfortunately. But the thing about it is rental prices have gone up in just that short period of time. And so the next tenant that moves in, I'm going to get even more for rent for it. And obviously my, payments staying the same. It ain't going up. It's a, it's a fixed payment. So it just increasing my margins on that property. So I'm going to, it's like what I call it, like a bump in the road, a learning experience and, and try to avoid the mistakes on the going forward with them. So definitely. And the beautiful thing is because the tenant was vetted the right way, they were still a good person. They just couldn't afford the rent. They didn't destroy the unit. They tech, they kept really good care of the unit. They were a great tenant for, for eight or nine months. But then what we see is people can't make ends meet. And the, the, the cool part about this, a fact, uh, aside from the fact that, you know, it didn't work out, but that's okay. And we yep. have to be ready for, for a new tenant. No problem. At the same time, you bought another property while that was cash flowing. Yeah. You bought the second property. Now we spent more money on that, but yep. it's a beautiful part of town. You bought that for $100,000, right? Yep. We put 13000 into it. Yep. We added a bedroom. Yep. So we went from three to a four bedroom, which means our rent goes up from $1,200 to $1,300 a month. 100% Section 8. Yep. What has that been like? Now you have your cash tenant, you have your Section 8 tenant. One's 100% at 1300 a month. One is 0% guaranteed at, at a little bit less. What what were you able to see in the contrast between those two tenants? The, the crazy thing to me on that one was obviously we provide refrigerator and stove to the tenants and it, it, things happen so quick, Rhett, honestly, like, uh, you know, when a tenant's ready to you know move in or whatever, I'm thinking I have a few days to get, you know, I don't want to necessarily put a brand new refrigerator and stove in a, in a place that, that doesn't have a tenant in there yet, just for obvious oh. reasons. Yeah. And uh, so then called me 
and said, Hey, they're ready to move in or whatever. And I'm like, okay. And this was on a Friday. So I'm thinking, well, and she told me some places to get the, the appliances from, I think it was the refrigerator is really all we needed on that one. And she's like, you know, we need to get a refrigerator. Here's the two places I recommend. Or I'm like, okay, I'm thinking I got the weekend to get it, you know, situated or whatever, you know, and I'm getting a call on Saturday, like, Jason, they're at so-and-so appliance store. <laughs> Have you got the refrigerator bought yet? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> so I had, I had to call, call the refrigerator store, buy the refrigerator, and the tenant picked the refrigerator up. I'm assuming dispose of the other one, put it in themselves. I'm like, they were that ready and needing a place to live that they were, I mean, it was like, whoa, okay, if you're wanting to do it, I'll have no problem. Save me the trouble, you know? And so, and then since then, if I had to think of all the problems I've had, it's zero. I have, I haven't heard from them. I don't even know who they are or what they look like. All I know is I get a check every month and I haven't had a phone call. I haven't had nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, knock on wood that it will continue that way, but I have had nothing but a check coming in every month. And, and it's been amazing, right? And yeah. what I tell people too, Jason, is like, when we create these units, one thing I love about you as an investor is I'll call you and say, hey, Jason, look, we got to do this to the unit to get it ready. And you're like, yes, we got to yeah. do this. Yes. Yeah. And what it does is it puts people in units like that and they have everything they need. There's, no comp there's nothing that they're going to complain about. There aren't repairs that need to be done because when every time I called you and said, hey, we should do this, you say, I trust you. Let's do it. And- yeah. I, I don't I no issues. I want no issues, you know, with the, with the with the property. I don't want a phone call about this or a phone call about that. And uh and it's been that way. There's been none. There's actually been none. Now, this second property funny enough, right? I don't know if you remember. I started getting a little bit of cold feet on it at the towards the very end because it was, you know, it wasn't there wasn't a lot of equity in it. You know, yeah. I was getting fixed up and then and, uh, you know, the cost of the property plus fixing up, they didn't leave me a lot much, you know, much room after the, you know, what the appraised value would be. So I was getting a little bit of cold feet and you kind of like almost drug me through doing it. And, you know, and, and I'm looking at myself now, like, man, if I would have just said, no, I'm not doing it, that would have been a big mistake. I would have passed up. It's, it's cash flow and great. And like I said, I've had no problems out of it. So the only, the only thing I did dome was not probably getting a section eight tenant on the first one. And, uh, but like I said, I'll be cash flowing even more a ridiculous amount, ridiculous amount of cash flow. <laughs> first one, it's going to be crazy. It but, is because the numbers are amazing. You're into that first property for 76,000. We're going to put a tenant in there for 12 or $1,300 a month. It's a huge unit. And when we do that, that unit's going to be worth, uh, an unbelievable amount of money. Plus you look at this second property you bought, right? The one that you got cold feet on. Yeah. It's an area that I love. That's an area of town that is extremely safe. It's a great place to live. And the quality of that house was very high, right? Good. We, we had a, a, a home where the majority of work that we did was to get it ready for section eight and add a bedroom. Right. And of course, touch up things that, but the person who lived there before kept such a, you know, a, took good care of the unit to the fact, to the point where we didn't have to put a ton of work in. It wasn't a full rehab and they could still sell it as a premium, but we ran the numbers. You and I ran the numbers. We made sure that it would work. It yep. did. The money's guaranteed. It's mailbox money. It's the definition of mailbox money yep. to the point where you were like, I need another one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, so you bought, then you bought your next one yep. for $55,000, which oh. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how you bought that house for, for $55,000. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. We put 27000 into it. That needed a, a little bit more work. But now we have a tenant lined up. We have a Section 8 inspection scheduled for Monday. Once that passes, they're going to move in immediately. Talk a little bit about what that process was like for that third unit. Well, going back to what I said earlier about dealing with contractors, you know, like I built two houses, you know, contractors are, can be what they are. You know, they, they can flake out on you, change the price on you. They can, they can do a lot of different things and make it difficult. But I mean, you pretty much hold our hands through the whole process. And I, I, I basically send you money 
and then you tell me it's ready and I don't have any any issues, no phone calls, no, you know, Jason, uh, you know, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. It's like you go in there and they get it done. I don't know how you're doing it, to be honest with you, right? I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> You got working on 20 different properties I'm, when I'm doing one, you know, and I'm struggling, you know, with contractors and you're doing 20 and, and it's done so fast too. It's unbelievably fast. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, you know, I haven't had any issues. I, I really haven't any issues other than making that stupid decision on the first one with the, with the tenant. But it didn't cost you any money. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like they left or they, we had to spend $10,000 to evict them. We said, Hey, it's not going to work. And they left. Yep. We yep. didn't have to spend money on attorneys. We didn't have to deal with it. With, they didn't damage the unit. They were just older people that realized that they probably rented. They got excited. I remember when when we first had that unit, they wanted to go over there 10 times to <laughs> measure for blinds and uh, to measure for wallpaper. And it's like, hey, slow down, you know. Yep. Um, but now we're going to get a tenant in there. It's They're going to be in there for probably $1,200 a month. You're going to yep. be bringing you know, 2,400, 12, 12, and 13, I mean, $3,700 a month in guaranteed income in, in under 18 months. That's pretty unbelievable, Jason. It, it like, I live not, I, I live in a fairly decent home and the, and the payment on it's kind of high. And with three properties, it's more than I'm going to cover my, my house payment. So basically living for free. I guess is what I, you could call it or, you know, keep doing what I'm doing. And it would be, you know, really another three properties. And my, my wife wouldn't really have to work. You know, she could stay home and, think and about, uh, think about that. Yeah. How amazing is that, right? Yeah. If you keep going at this pace in another six, 12, 18 months, whatever it is, you can then change your life to the point where you don't have to worry about your mortgage being paid. It's getting paid yeah. by the government. You yep. can even talk about having your wife stop working because yep. that extra income is coming in for you. And it didn't take us five years, didn't take us 10 years to do it, right? Yep. You've just done it extremely cleanly, even with the cash tenant that didn't go perfect for us, didn't kill us, right? No, no. You've had a team that's been able to just kind of help you through it, property management contractors and, and realtors, the right people in the right places to be able to have it move efficiently. Um, what do you think, uh, your next five years looks like, Jason? What do you think the next five years, what do you think the next 10 years look like for you? Well, uh, not, I forgot to tell how I, how I purchased the first couple of properties. I did, I did traditional route 20% down and then repairs out of pocket. And you know, that gets expensive after you, after a couple of them, that's a lot of money, a lot of cash getting tied up. And I thought, well, how can I grow this faster? You know, how can I, without having to put so much money out of pocket? Cause that will slow my, you know, slow my growth down. And so I did a HELOC on my primary home. And that was one of the benefits about building it. You save so much money, you get so much equity in them that you can, you know, I can pull out an equity loan, not a problem. And I pulled out an equity loan, purchased this third property with an equity loan, paid for the repairs with my equity loan. And so when I get the tenant, in there, I'm gonna refinance and get all my money back out. So it's the Burr method, basically. I'm gonna do the Burr. I'm doing the Burr method on it, and uh, I'm gonna get all my money back out. I'm still gonna make a decent cash flow, not quite as much as my first two, but it's gonna be really respectable. And I ain't gonna have no money in the deal. And then I'm gonna do that again and again and again and until until I got more than I know what to do with. Probably that's my goal. I you know five ten years from now, I, I hope to have fifty of them, honestly, but. Just uh, you're 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 on pace, right? And 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 the thing is too, Jason, and it's so important. And I love what you said because you didn't start like a bat out of hell buying yep. properties left and right. You bought one, you waited till it cash flowed. You bought yep. another. We secured a tenant. We started bringing money in. You bought another. So now you have such a strong proof of concept to where you can go to people around you. Or you can have those conversations with your wife, or you can have the confidence in where you're putting that money. Because when you spend your money, it's a lot of money. I mean, we're talking about spending 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars. You want to make sure it works. Yeah. Yep. You have done that every single time. You've spent more money and more money and more money because 
it works. It's working for you. You're seeing it. You're getting that money direct deposited into your bank account every single month. Now, of course, I'm sure you've spent a lot of money in the last 18 months on these properties. You must go to, to look at them once a month or once every couple months, right? Well, what I do in, in the lease, I put in there that on the first day they move in, I get to spend the night. And so I get to... <laughs> live and I don't make them cook me supper and I sleep on the couch, but <laughs> at least no, I haven't been to one. Don't the only thing I've ever seen is pictures. Unbelievable. Can you believe that? People must think you're crazy when you tell people that. <laughs> Sometimes I think I am, you know, <laughs> I've never, never been to, and I, I went, I go to Gulf Shores, Alabama a lot for vacations. And, you know, I didn't even, I was like, I don't even need to drive, drive by They're They're doing their thing. And, you know, there's no, not even, I don't even need to drive by. I just went on to Gulf Shores and, and I uh, had a family vacation and came back. So I love that because, you know, you just, you trust the process and yep. it works. You trust your team to make sure that they take care of you and everything works. So Jason, what, do, what would you tell somebody who was in your position 18 months ago, who wanted to get into this, was really thinking about it, but was afraid, was timid, didn't know what the next step would be, what would you tell that person? You know, I would tell them to absolutely do it. Uh, you know, we, you know, I got a 401k at work and, you know, it's the, the four, I don't know if you've seen the market, it's, it goes up some, down some, it's been doing like sideways. It hasn't really done much in the last, last year. Um, and so if you want to earn money through, uh, appreciation of a home, uh, cash flow of the home, uh, tax benefits of the home, you know, the, the income, I, I don't think I've had to pay any taxes on any of the income I received because there's so many write-offs with it and everything. And, and, uh, I mean, there's several ways you make money with these properties versus, you know, your 401k sitting there just doing it's going sideways and not really going up a whole lot. Yeah. The company matches, which is great and everything, but if, uh, you know, if the property's never appreciated a penny and I have ten hundred thousand dollar homes in 20, 30 years, I got a million dollars, you know, and, and that's with them not appreciating anything and just the house is slowly getting paid off over time. So that's one way I'm looking at it. Appreciation is a bonus, but, you know, I'm taking the tax benefits and the, the cash flow right now. So and you're 100 percent right, too, Jason, about having 10 houses that are one hundred thousand dollars a piece. That's a million dollars just sitting there. And yep. making thirteen thousand a month in gross profit on them, if they're each kicking off thirteen hundred a month, so yeah. it doesn't matter if they appreciate or not. Now, if they if they do, great. And then you can sell them for one point two, one point three million in 10, 15 years. But if they, do, you just make thirteen thousand a month for the next fifty months, eighty yeah. months, one hundred and twenty months, right? Yeah. Um, which is incredible. And and you bring up a great point about your four hundred one k moving sideways. If I asked you right now, what stocks you hold in your 401k, would you be able to tell me everything you own and how much of it you own? Nope, not a clue. Not a clue. It's, it's a, it's a, everybody, I get the same answer every time. Yep. Right. Versus you can go to your rental properties. You can touch them. You can feel them. You can yep. talk to the tenants. You see that money coming in. You know exactly what you own. And I think there's something to be said for that. No, I do too. I do too. I, I feel I have, I have some control in what's happening with it. You know, like with the 401k, it's it's sitting there and it could go, it could fall in half tomorrow and there ain't really much I can do about it. But let's say, which it wouldn't happen, those properties fall in half. Well, I'm still kicking off that rent, like you said, every month. So I'm still getting, I'm still getting paid every month, regardless of, of what's going on. And, you know, the, I've had somebody say, well, aren't you worried that they'll cut the program or, you know, you know, something will happen with the government and the government collapses. Well, if it got to the point, the government collapses, we're all in trouble anyway, regardless. And then, and, and they're not going to, you know, there's too many people that depend on that program for them to uh, to do anything with it would be silly. So, I, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty safe. It's pretty safe. It is. And, and I think if anything capitalizes that or highlights that the most, it's it's going back to what you said at the beginning of this of this video. And it's that you don't even have time to order the appliances 
because someone is so eager to move into your unit so fast. And what not a lot of people understand people, I, I tell people that in some of these cities, there's tens of thousands of people on these wait lists, Jason. And people think that they're all just, you know, living a great life with their vouchers waiting to move into a home. They're not. Yeah. They're, they're living on the street. They're in housing projects. They're in shelters. They're yeah. in abuse shelters. I mean, just the worst places. So as soon as these units sign off by, they're signed off on by Section 8, they're getting their butts over there as fast as they can. And I don't think there's a story that highlights that better. Then, then you mentioning that about uh, uh, about not being able to get appliances in the units fast enough once they yeah. pass inspection. Yep. No, it's 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 crazy. Uh, you know, it's 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 good that we're helping people. Like today, just in my little small town, uh, you know, going to the local Walmart, and there's I've never seen it before, but there's like four or five people out there with signs. One saying, "I'm homeless and I need you know food," and 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 it's it's not it's not a problem that. 10 years from now, it's going to be better. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's going to be a continual problem. People are going to be uh, needing these programs more and more. And, uh, you know, the more properties I can have available to them, you know, yeah, I, I'm out of money to get them, get them going or whatever, but I get a return and I get to put a family in need in a home. So uh, my goal is just to keep buying the nicest properties for the least amount of money as I can get them for and, and put, in, put money in them to make them nice for them. And, and, uh, you know, I'd like, like I said, I'd like to have 50 of them one day, you know, honestly, if I can get to that level. I mean, I don't see where I couldn't. All I need is time, you know. And so I want to get to your level, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's all about repeating a process. And that's a, that's what you're doing. And, you know, you coming on here and talking about that is going to inspire people who are watching this to do it. Because yeah. there's so many people out there that are that are hoping they want what you have. And yeah. I want to have you on here today because I wanted you to show them that it's possible. And that's awesome. what, and, and guys, please, if you have any questions for Jason, hop into the comments below, uh, leave your comments, leave your questions for him. He'll be down there. He'll answer questions. Uh, I will too. Jason, thank you so much for your time. You've been more than generous with your time today. And uh, yep. you know, you'll get into those comments and, and help people out with some of the questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.